Hello, my Bell 5000 Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. All right, we are back with another Coffee House Crime. That's right. Title of today's story is The House Party Killer, The Horrific Case of Tyler Hadley. I believe that's how you pronounce the last name. I don't fucking know. All right. I'm excited to get into this story. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, go up with something special. Let's get sad for all the wrong reasons. That's, that's how Coffee House Crime goes? It was a wild house party like no other. And while guests were there for beers and a good time, they had no idea what secrets the house was keeping from them only a few hours prior. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to Coffee House Crime. Today we're looking at the case of Tyler Hadley and his wild house party in the summer of 2011. There's a lot to consider to this case. With Tyler's crimes so brutal and callous, it's hard not to consider him as a monster. But when you take a look at the mentality of this case, things become a little less clear. So pull up a seat, grab a coffee and sit back. This is the case of Tyler Hadley. Way ahead of you, buddy. I'm sitting on my booty already, I already got my cup of coffee, and it's like my 10th cup of coffee. I'm doing amazing. Welcome to the sleepy city of Port St. Lucie. Not much goes on here. Located 125 miles north of Miami and 150 miles southeast of Orlando, Port St. Lucie rests on the Atlantic coast of southern Florida. The city's land was bought in 1961 by the Mackle Brothers, and over the years, 40,000 acres of sw- I'm telling you, I have never wanted to go to a place where, you know, a horrific crime happened more than I do whenever I watch his videos. The man has a gift. Like, who wakes up in the morning and is like, Baby, I know the perfect vacation spot. So many murders happen. It's unbelievable. You, 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 we're... Love it. But he makes it that. Look at how beautiful. Oh, bet you can do some killer fishing in there. Swamp and pine forest were slowly converted into cheap land for sale. In 1980, the town's population had reached 15,000 residents, and by 2019, it had multiplied over tenfold to a population of 201,000. Blake Hadley and his wife Mary Jo were one of the city's relatively early settlers. They moved to Port St. Lucie from Fort Lauderdale in 1983 to be closer to Blake's parents. Both of them had retired nearby, and so Blake wanted to have the opportunity to see them more often. Blake and Mary Jo were a compassionate, honest couple, and held secure jobs. Blake was an engineer at the St. Lucie nuclear power plant, and Mary Jo was a teacher at one of the local elementary schools. Okay. She was described as someone who would never give up on you, no matter who you were. Looks like a teacher. I don't know what that means, but she looks like a teacher. She could be- yeah. Four years later, in 1987, the loving married couple had a son named Ryan Hadley. And six years later, Mary Jo would also give birth to their second son, Tyler Hadley. The Hadleys were a typically cheery family with a bright future ahead. Both Tyler and Ryan seemed to be happy kids growing up. That happy upbringing would continue for Ryan, but for Tyler, it was a different story. In her teen years and right through into adulthood, Mary Jo suffered from chronic mild depression. And it was at the early age of six that Tyler started to display the same symptoms. Worried that her son Tyler may suffer from depression as well, he was signed up to counselling. A couple years later though, that didn't seem to do the trick, and so, at the age of 10, unconventionally, he was prescribed Lexapro, an antidepressant. This may seem to most as a rather drastic decision, and don't get me wrong, it is, but Tyler was used to this sort of treatment. He was actually born prematurely, and as a result, he was in an incubator for the first month of his life. This Damn. rather tough start to Tyler's life seemed to pull at his mother's heart. Poor kid's a hell of a go. Shit. Strings, because whenever he was sad or in pain, his mother would be overprotective to him. This kind of behaviour, coupled with Tyler's signs of depression, would worsen. And by the age of 15, he had also been prescribed Adderall, 
a stimulant used to treat ADHD, and Prozac, another antidepressant. He was also prescribed hormone medication to treat his problematic thyroid. Despite his initial hardships, Tyler trucked on into his mid-teens. What the hell else does this boy got? Good lord! Shit! We're a little shit, so more mess, and by the time he's like 13, then I have probably will be my whole life. But saying that, at the age of 16, he was still battling his depression. And mm. to add to that, he was now bulimic and had low self-esteem. In fact, Mary Jo had a rather ludicrous solution to these problems. She was worried that Tyler was getting bullied at school for being short and chubby, and also didn't like that he had low self-esteem. Her answer to- He probably was. People are mean back in the day. I don't know how long ago this happened, but people are mean back in the day. I, I, blame me, I know. I was not one of the mean people. Kids can be mean. <sighs> With all the health problems he had, plus The ADD or ADHD, I forget which one he said. It was one of the ADs. School was probably hard enough on him. Probably did act out a little bit, made him perfect target for, for bullies, like no lie. Man, I feel bad for this poor kid. That was to persuade him to start taking growth hormone injections. But otherwise, Tyler seemed like a happy kid. He was described. Oh yeah, and growth hormone, and thyroid, and... Sweet baby Jesus. That's a lot of shit for one child to go through. Described by neighbours as a very respectful, polite young boy. He liked to skate, ride his bike, play baseball with his dad, or kick a football in the street. And Tyler was close to his parents too. As a boy, he would stay up late into the evenings for his dad to return home, so that they could play basketball together in the driveway, often until midnight. And on the weekends, neighbours would hear the Hadley family splashing and laughing in their back garden's pool. But by the time Tyler had entered high school, things changed. As a child, Tyler had always been quiet, difficult to read. But into his teenage years, his personality seemed to 180. He was now eccentric, unpredictable, and troubled. He always tried to pull a crowd. Even in the middle of a lesson, he would uncontrollably laugh or shout out. And in 2010, Tyler began his path into serious trouble. It was in the middle of summer that year when Tyler and a few friends found an abandoned couch. They dragged the couch into a clearing in the North Fork River Preserve, dousing it with gasoline and setting it alight. And at the risk Why? of the entire preserve being set up- Whenever I was young, you know all the things I could have done with the couch. <laughs> Bro. I could have turned that couch into so many different fucking things. I could have done so much shit with a couch. Why would you burn a couch? Dummies. The blaze, the fire department had to be called out. Although Tyler, along with his friends, were only given a warning, Mary Jo suddenly had the sense that she had lost control of her youngest son. Sent fire to couches that he could have had a lot more fun with than just burning one time. Yeah, there's some seriously wrong with this guy. The same. And his mental health didn't improve either. He was eventually prescribed hydroxazine, a mild anti-anxiety medication, as well as citalopram, an antidepressant that has been known to increase the risk of suicide in young adults. And in addition to all this medication, Tyler began to drink heavily. He would smoke pot often, take pills frequently, and even started taking ecstasy. I don't think ecstasy is going to help a damn thing, Bob. I'm just, I don't, I don't think it did you. No. I think ecstasy is going to make every little fucking thing you're going through worse. We're moving to the year of 2011. It is now April and Tyler is 17. The Hadley household is pretty quiet. Tyler's older brother Ryan is away at college and Tyler was in prison. Tyler had uh -huh. got into a f What? The, the, what? What? Why? Fucking Tyler. Bro, you're killing me. Already. 
I feel so bad for you, but you need to step back like a dumb dumb. Come on now, bud. You got this. Fights with one of his friends, and consequently, was arrested on a charge of aggravated battery. And because he had a previous record of burglary under his name, he was sentenced to St. Lucie County Jail for one week, followed by two weeks of house arrest. Or I could do that stand on the head of his pee pee. Yeah. I just gonna feel bad for this little guy going to the fucking jail and everything, and it's like, oh, he was there for a week. Mary Jo confiscated her son's phone as a result, and this would. That probably hurt him more. Just add an additional layer of anger and stress between the two. Slowly, Tyler started to hate his own mother. I mean, sure, it was normal for the two to argue whenever Tyler was in trouble. But this time, things were a little bit different. It seemed that recently, whenever someone had crossed Tyler's path, he would develop a new, deep level of hatred for them. Proof was in the pudding. He had just beaten the hell out of one of his friends. And now, after his parents had confiscated his phone away from him, he was wishing death upon them. The water in Tyler's teapot was now I'm not a violent person, but I would have bitch slapped him right in his mouth. Wish death upon me. Boy, you're gonna have to chew your food with your butt, cause I'm gonna knock your teeth down your damn throat. Well, I gotta say about it. Surely heating up. And it didn't seem to be far off boiling temperature either. And then July came around. What happened in July? Oh, fuck. July the 16th. 2011. It was a Saturday, and the weather was as beautiful as ever. 84 degrees Fahrenheit, sunny, with few clouds in the sky. At 11.15pm, That was a beautiful day. Tyler posted a message to his Facebook wall. Party at my crib tonight, maybe. No one was convinced by this, but at 8.15pm, Tyler posted another message. Party at my house, hit me up. Although Tyler attended a local school, he wasn't that popular, or at least he was far from well known. The party was an open invite to anyone though, and it was sure to be huge. His parents, Mary Jo and Blake, were out of town. Where exactly they went, or how far they were, was anyone's guess. Tyler had been telling his friends all week that he was planning on hosting a house party, but none- Like they say, when the cat is away, the mice will play. I don't know. I think that's how it goes, ain't it? Basically, parents think their kids are going to have a party. It is what it is. None of them believed him. In fact, Tyler had never hosted a house party before, both of his parents never comfortable with the idea. However, if they were out of town, they'd never know. Following from the morning, it was a warm summer evening too, and there was absolutely nothing going on in Port St. Lucie later that night. In fact, there never really was. I mean, there probably really wouldn't be, cause 16th of July, that's almost two weeks after 4th of July, bro, yeah. No, they ain't gonna be shit going on, everyone's broke from the fucking fireworks. Man, let me get down. Um, bro, you know how many fireworks I let off? No, I, well, let me put, I ain't got no damn dollar. <laughs> Oh god, I'm not lying though. So yeah, there probably really wasn't much of anything going on. There's not going to be until the following month. Everybody starts getting out of that little bit of a hole that they dug themselves because of fireworks and burgers. I have the burgers. The city had no access to the beach, no downtown, and no place for teenagers to hang out at night. Even the parks were closed. Hey, they can hang out in the graveyard. We just seen a video about that. Never mind, don't, don't. That's, that ended up bad. Never mind. So it was no surprise when over 60 people turned up at Tyler's house to get loose. Most Cut of those loose. who attended, though, had no idea. Cut loose. Cut loose. Yeah. Oh yeah, see, you all know the words too. I'm just imagining that some of y'all start singing it too. If not... This is my disappointment face. Body cut, put loose. 
owners. They didn't who Tyler was. And as a result, they didn't care if they damaged the property. They split the family couch and other seats apart, played beer pong across the dining table located next to the family computer, ate any food they could find in the cupboards, and oh. gathered in groups on the front garden, tossing empty beer cans over the lawn. Oh. Bottles were thrown at- I would've came home swinging bottles at faces, bro. Oh, the You done ate my damn food. Fucked up my couch. I don't have a place to sit while I'm pissed off. I ain't waiting no damn line to get into my own bathroom sitting in my next most favorite spot in the house. Assholes. The walls and floor, shattering on impact, and cigarette butts were burnt out on the rug, kitchen counters, and walls. Yeah, The I, family's I, computer I, was an absolute- I've been fucking some faces with my fist. I ain't going to lie. Hell no. Bro. Mess 2. Its keyboard covered in a brownish dried liquid. Could be from beer or coke, nobody looked at it too closely. And Good Tyler was questioned by several people where his parents were. He gave them all different answers. They're in Orlando, they're in Georgia, this is my house, they don't live here. By midnight, over a hundred people were in Tyler's parents' home, but the property itself looked like it had been vandalised for weeks. There were even reports of bloodstains found in the main areas, maybe from people partying too hard. I am loving the music he has playing in the background, like, yeah. Folks were still playing beer pong when the ball bounced to the floor and rolled under the table. It stopped in a gloopy dark brown liquid. Justin, the friend who picked up the ball, was grossed out. He didn't know what it was, but he didn't think much of it. So he wiped it on his shirt, before carrying on to use the ball for more beer pong. It was fuck of blood, wasn't it? Ah, oh, mother. It was around 1am when Tyler asked his best friend Michael if he could step outside with him to talk more privately. Tyler had been friends with Michael since they were 8 years old. They then walked to the stop sign at the end of the block, and when they got there, Tyler had some awful news to share with Michael. He said, I killed my parents. Michael laughed, not believing him. But then Tyler said, Michael, I'm being serious. If you look close enough, you'll see the signs. He told Michael to look in the driveway, and there he finally noticed the two cars that belonged to Michael's mother and father. They couldn't have gone far without them. He then took Michael to the garage and told him to look inside. And after making sure that nobody was watching, Michael walked in and turned on the light. There he finally noticed a bloody shoe print, and blood seeping from underneath the door's hinge. He immediately rushed back out of the garage, shutting the door behind him, heart thumping. But there was still one last thing that Tyler wanted to show Michael. And so on that note, he led him to the master bedroom. The door was locked, but when he opened it, the stench was instantly unbearable. The scene was not much better either. Furniture scattered the entire room, dining room chairs and blood-soaked towels were stacked in a huge pile. Items carelessly thrown about the place. See, is this an actual photo from the crime scene? The place where the murder happened. Murder. Is it? See, he needs to do like Mr. Bond does, put a little thing somewhere on the screen saying, hey, real photo of the shit. Nami? And at the bottom of it all, emerging from the debris, Andrew could see a thick, white leg. Tyler told Michael that earlier that afternoon, shortly before- Two Ks or three Ks, how thick is it? Before 5pm, Tyler hid his parents' cell phones so that they could not call for help. Oh, it was thick. He then psyched himself up, took three pills of- Fucking 4K thick. ...ecstasy, and headed to the garage to grab a claw hammer. And oh, once shit. he returned to the living room, he then stood behind his mother while she was working at the family computer. For a full five minutes, he stood behind her, thinking about what he was going to do. And as she- Let me guess, not one of those things that he was thinking about doing was put the hammer down and walk the fuck away. I have a feeling all the other- all the thoughts that actually went through this son of a bitch's head was- Which? Should I do it like- Ha 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 Should I do it like- 
Ah, uh, she'll just be like real sneaky, be like, oh, motherfucker, oh, motherfucker. How should I do this? Those were the thoughts going through his head. Fuck. Turned around, he finally raised the hammer and struck down onto Mary Jo's head. Damn. As she screamed, Blake, who was sleeping at the time, ran out of the master bedroom. The emotional pain must have been unfathomable to see his own son murdering his wife. They locked eyes for a few seconds before he asked Tyler, why? Why the fuck did you do this, boy? Boy. Got a war, sir. Tyler replied with, why the fuck not, before leaping at his father and beating him to death too. And after he killed both of his parents, he wrapped towels around their heads and dragged them into the master bedroom, placing the bodies side by side, face down, the hammer on the ground between them. He then threw every piece of bloody evidence he could find into the bedroom, burying his parents beneath a pile of broken furniture, shattered glass, bloody towels, books, a sponge mop, Clorox wipes, and coffee. It took Tyler over three hours to clean up the mess, and still he didn't manage to clean all of it up. For example, the messy keyboard, and the substance that the ping pong ball had rolled into before being used in people's drinks again. Yeah, that was Mary Jo's blood. After it all, he took a long hot shower, and after that, stared at himself in the bathroom mirror, laughing hysterically. <sighs> I would have flipped shit. I would have killed him. I would have beat him until he died out his ass. I don't know how the fuck that's possible, but I swear on everything fucking holy. If I drink some blood contaminated beer, beer contaminated blood, I don't know how the fuck you say I would beat him until he died out of his ass. I don't know how that's possible, but that's what would fucking happen. Erically. His friend Michael was traumatized from the story. He was pale and clearly in shock. He asked Tyler if he could have a photo with him, knowing this would be the last time he would ever be together with his childhood friend. Shortly after that... Is this the photo? Because he, he looks like he's just like... Now the other dude... He looks generally butt fucked. Like, butt fucked. And I mean, just straight butt fucker. Because he knows once he gets to the pin, he's getting pinned. In full Nelson. <sighs> Not even going to get a reach around, bud. You fucked. Literally. He left the party. I left the party too. You just show me your dead parents on the damn floor cutting the blood every fucking way. And you expect me to still be hanging out here when the popo come beating down your door to take your ass to prison? After I done went there and touched that damn light switch, I have touched the door, I've walked in there. Like, I have already been too damn many places. I ain't sticking around. Fuck you. Fuck the horse you rode in on. You all can suck an ass. <laughs> Oh. oh. It was now 4am in the morning and Tyler's party was still in full swing. Despite sharing his story with Michael, he carried on drinking and laughing with strangers he didn't know. And those people would come and- That music bro, it's got me. Go, but the house itself still had well above 50 punters crammed inside. At 4.40am, Tyler posted another message to his Facebook wall. Party at my house again. Hit me up. That didn't last long though, as two minutes later, police stormed Tyler's party. Michael had actually called Crime Stoppers hotline and told them everything. Officers Good were boy. then dispatched shortly after. Hell yeah! It deserves a lollipop for the show. I really want a lollipop. I'm sorry. I love fuckers. After, and now two of them were inside the property, guns drawn as they ordered Tyler to put his hands up. 
He seemed frantic, incoherent, annoyed. His pupils were large, and he was clearly on some sort of drug. And after he was shackled in the driveway... Puffing gas, flicking the bean. Guarantee it. Dirty bastard. Way, police officers started walking towards the master bedroom. It's then that he shouted, No, stop. <laughs> you can't go in there. No, you they ignored do his not plea, want to go in there. Turned to the door handle you need and to forced just... the door open. And there they found the bodies of Blake and Mary Jo Hadley. Mm. They've been in there, what, almost two days now? At least one full day, at least. Oh, fuck. They had been beaten to death, described just as Tyler had told Michael, and it would take police hours to filter through the scene. As police searched the house, they would find- My question, my question. Serious question. I know. A serious question. Was they dead when he drugged them in there, or was- there are a chance where they might have lived if they would have got medical attention. I'm not, I, I, I'm just wondering. I, it don't really make a difference. He's still a murdering piece of shit that deserves to have his head be done with that same exact hammer. I was just wondering if there was a chance for them to live. Like he beat him to death, but they wasn't dead. You know, like, like when someone says they shit themselves to death. They're, they're not dead, but just for you to understand just how badly it was. Hmm. Prescription bottles in Tyler's name. For hydroxyzine, citalopram, Prozac, Adderall, hormone injections, and various types of other pills. And in the early morning after the- My fucker's flying fucking high as a fucking kite. There's a lot of fucks in that sentence, sorry. He was on uppers, downers, zigzaggers, wiggle wagglers. He didn't know which way was up, down, left, or right. Everything was just going round. Party. News of Tyler's story and then arrest spread quickly throughout the city of Port St. Lucie. News that would eventually lead back to Ryan, who now faced the unbearable reality of losing not only his parents, but. I mean, the one dude I, I wouldn't be too butthurt about losing, but I know he's your brother and all, but he killed your mama, he killed your daddy. He probably would try to kill you too if he was there. Good riddance to bad rubbish. ...but his brother too. And police would discover that on the night of the killing, Tyler had also stopped at an ATM machine to withdraw over $5,000 in cash. All of it from his parents' bank card. They would learn from friends of Tyler that he had previously fantasized about murdering his parents and throwing a huge party while their bodies were still inside the house. Yeah, tall, lanky son of a bitch, sir. Oh, see how tall he was? Oh, that was a tall boy. I punched him in the back of the head. House. They never took him seriously, however, always dismissing his apparent jokes. On the 20th of March 2014, Tyler was sentenced by a court of law in the state of Florida for the murder of both of his parents. He was given life in jail without the possibility of parole. Authorities declared that the death penalty was not an option under law due to Tyler only being 17 at oh the time. God. So he literally beat them both, mainly, looks like in... These here are probably defensive. But mainly, that's right, she was probably facing away from him whenever he was beating on her because he she was at the computer he would have came up behind her so that explains why they're all on the back on her his though my god everywhere fractures is the fx the a is abrasion c is contusions l is lacerations and p is Pattern. Wound. That says fixed fibula. I don't know what that means, but...
Oh my god. Abrasions, contusions, lacerations, lacerations. Contusion and abrasion. Laceration and abrasion. Laceration, abrasion. Like the dude got it ten times worse. I don't know if it's where he fought back. Because you can clearly see he, he was a righty. He came in swinging with his right hand. He blocked with his left. Hence the two there and the hand so messed up. Took some blows to the back of the head, though. Fuck! Authorities declared that the death penalty was not an option. I mean, she got it bad too, but nowhere near as bad as the dad. It must have been autopsied by different people because it's different writing. Can't read this one as well. True doctor writing right there. Option under law due to Tyler only being 17 at the time of the murders. Instead, he remains behind bars, with not a single minute of his remaining life as a free man. Yeah. This is a really interesting case to think about. What Tyler managed to bring himself to do to his parents is undoubtedly awful. Oh, but yeah. questions on Tyler's mental health were never fully answered throughout his trial. Tyler was only 10 years old when he was first exposed to Lexapro, an antidepressant that restabilizes mood hormones in the brain. And as the years went by, that would snowball to additional SSRIs, stimulants, and even technically, steroids. Mixed with both mild and even extreme aggravators like alcohol and ecstasy, Tyler's brain was scrambled at a very young age, and then into his mid to late teens, he snapped. I am in no shape or form defending Tyler's case here. At the end of the day, if someone's dangerous enough to kill their parents, they should definitely remain behind bars. Yeah. It is, however... Th I agree with him. Because I know he's about to be like, you know... Dude was fucked up in the head. I get that. I don't... See, that's why I love watching Coffee House Crime, because... Me, I'm... I'm the type of person who's like, man, how's your tongue tasting your own ass, point extra? You know what I mean? But he takes that extra little step on the ones, not every story you can. Some people are just the biggest piece of shit ever. But on a lot of the stories, you end up having this little bit of, damn. You know what I mean? Like, you just want to just full-on hate that motherfucker. For whatever reason that they did, whatever they did, like murder their whole family or whatever the case may be, you just truly want to hate that person for it so much. It's just like, oh yeah, the motherfucker. But... Uh, it's like... No, don't you do this to me, Adrian. That's rude. How could... I was dead set on someone just putting their hand up his boom and working his mouth like a puppet. Now you've ruined it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thought-provoking to wonder how much control Tyler actually had over himself with yeah. all of this going on in the background. And however much it did contribute to what Tyler did to his parents in the end, I'll leave that for you to decide. All right. That was a pretty damn good story, though. I liked it. I don't know where the other end of this went. There it is. I liked it. I liked it a lot. That was a good little story. There it was. I'm glad he's in prison, though. For the rest of his days. Bow, bow, bow. Alright, if y'all enjoyed today's story as much as I did, please leave a thumbs up. If you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, deranged things that make you want to cry ever so tenderly into your pillow because you have lost your damn mind for feeling bad for a cold-blooded murderer, think about subscribing. If you watch Coffee House Crime, you'll feel like that quite often, at least once a week. Unless you watch the whole playlist, and you can feel like that anytime you want. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. -bye.
I do feel bad because depression ain't nothing to mess with. And then all the drugs that he was on prescribed and happy, happy go lucky ones, non prescription, illegal. He, well, at the time, illegal, let's put it that way. Ecstasy, ecstasy will probably always be illegal as shit. But all the medicine he was prescribed and all the medicine he was taking on top of that, plus drinking and alcohol abuse and everything, probably really did take a very large toll on his mental faculties. So he might not have been all there whenever shit started to pop off. But if what they said was right, that he actually stood there and debated on what he wanted to do to his mother, that shows a tad bit of sanity, you know what I mean? Like, I feel bad, but I still hope he's getting it in the butt. I mean... Right in the butt. No lie. 